Hi everybody, welcome to another Doug's Lab video. In this video I'm going to show you how to make nitric acid at 68% concentration using a nitrate salt and sulfuric acid. Now my method is different than most other methods you'll find online because my method uh, directly synthesizes 68% azeotropic nitric acid as opposed to other methods which synthesize 100% nitric acid. Now these methods are problematic because they tend to decompose the nitric acid and they use excess sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid is expensive and for some people hard to come by. So I've devised a method where sulfuric acid is the limiting reagent and thus all of it is used. It's a lot more efficient. So anyway, most people use this top method here, which is a nitrate salt, in this case potassium nitrate, plus sulfuric acid, which will yield um, nitric acid and potassium sulfate. Now, you'll notice there's no water involved in this reaction, and any water that is involved will be captured by the sulfuric acid. The potassium nit or the uh, nitric acid that comes off comes off at 100% at, uh, I believe, 61 degrees Celsius. Now, this is a problem because when you're distilling off the nitric acid, this potassium sulfate is forming as a solid, and so uh, it builds up this big puck inside the receiving flask, and you tend to have a lot of acid decomposition because the heat can't transfer from the bottom of the flask to the top of the flask through the solid very well. So the nitric acid gets very hot on the bottom and decomposes to that brown, nasty nitrogen dioxide gas that you see coming out of most nitric acid, acid synthesis pots. So it's kind of an inefficient method. You, use, you have to use excess sulfuric acid to keep this a liquid, and your nitric acid that comes out is decomposing. And no one really ever uses 100% nitric acid, except for a few things. And if you need 100%, you can always synthesize it right before you use it, because storing 100% nitric acid is also problematic in, in that it decomposes. So, anyway, I use this method right here. I start with calcium, ni calcium nitrate, and calcium nitrate actually exists as a tetrahydrate. So, but I'll get into that in a second, because it's not exactly calcium nitrate. But, so I, I use calcium nitrate and water and sulfuric acid. So this is dilute sulfuric acid and calcium nitrate which produces calcium sulfate and nitric acid, and of course, uh, we have the water still in here because I added water over here. Now, the calcium sulfate is, uh, is essentially insoluble in this water over here, so the calcium sulfate will fall out of solution and tend to drive the reaction this way. So the equilibrium is highly pushed toward this side. In fact, it runs almost to completion. And then if you do it right, if you add just enough water over here, then on this side, you'll get right around the 68% nitric acid. Now, the reason I go for 68% nitric acid is because nitric acid forms an azeotrope with water at 68% that boils at 121 degrees Celsius. So using this method, you can just distill off direct 68% nitric acid, and because you're not distilling it off at 100%, you have virtually no decomposition. Also, you know almost exactly the concentration of nitric acid coming off based on the temperature because it locks in at its azeotrope of, of course, 68%. So, to review, um, if you look at my method versus the nitrate salt method, my method has virtually no decomposition to, ni to nitrogen dioxide, whereas the nitrate salt method and sulfuric acid, uh, you get some pretty heavy decomposition. Mine you synthesize direct known 68% concentration. This method uh, synthesizes direct 100% um, nitric acid, but of course also it's got a lot of nitrogen dioxide dissolved in it, so it's brown and it's fuming, and you know, I guess you could use vacuum distillation if you want 100% of white fuming nitric acid, but... That's neither here nor there. Um, my reaction byproducts are inert because I use excess calcium nitrate, which doesn't really affect the reaction. In fact, it helps drive the equilibrium this way. So with excess calcium nitrate, you use all of your sulfuric acid. In this method, the byproduct is high concentrated sulfuric acid because you have to use excess sulfuric acid to keep this potassium sulfate liquefied in order to efficiently distill off your nitric acid without significant decomposition. So my reaction byproducts are essentially gypsum and, uh, yes, basically warm gypsum and... Um, hot concentrated sulfuric acid mixed with potassium sulfate is the byproducts of the nitrate salt method. So the byproducts are a lot, a lot uh, more dangerous than this method. And of course mine, I have more efficient use of reagents in that um, the cheapest product is the excess reagent as opposed to here where the cheapest, where the most expensive product is the excess reagent. And uh, so the nitrate salt method is a little bit more wasteful. So anyway, um, we'll, I'll show you how to do this. We'll go to the lab and uh, I'll show you how to make the 68% nitric acid using my method. All right, so now we're in the lab, and uh, I've set up for simple distillation. And you can see I have the reagents that we're going to be using right over here. Uh, we have the calcium ammonium nitrate, which has been finely powdered in a blender, actually. Well, blender. Don't use your food blender for that. Um, we have our sulfuric acid, which is a rather dirty drain cleaner, 113.73 um, grams of it. We have our 92.12 grams of water. And of course, the uh, calcium ammonium nitrate. Uh, the calcium ammonium nitrate. We have 222.52 grams. So, we're going to add these all to the flask in a specific order. First, we're going to add the calcium ammonium nitrate as the solid. And this could take a while, so I might have to cut the video to get it all in. There we go. That's all the calcium ammonium nitrate. 
And then uh, we are going to push that down a little bit with a stirring rod so we don't have a, an issue with um, clogging up and bumping about this as even as possible. Uh, the second we are going to add the water. Now this is a very specific order because um, I'll show you why in a minute. So you always add acid to water and not the other way around. So there's the water. And we can also poke this around and allow it to stir for a little bit. All right, there we go. Make sure I put that somewhere safe. Okay, so now we're gonna add the sulfuric acid. Now this is the most uh, crucial step because of course the sulfuric acid, uh, when, we ad when we add it, we start getting our nitric acid. And so, um, but when we add sulfuric acid to water, be aware that it gets very, very hot. And because nitric acid only boils at 61 degrees Celsius, um, we could potentially start the nitric acid boiling right out of the flask and into our face. So be very, very careful and add the sulfuric acid in small portions with stirring and just be aware that it's going to get very, very hot. And that nitric acid is in fact present in the flask at the time of addition of sulfuric acid. So in fact, I'm going to actually start the water to my condenser right now by hooking up the adapter to the hoses to my sink and connecting the input tube and starting the water flow. I can turn it down a little bit. Okay, so now we have water flowing through a condenser, so if I, if we do have a boiling nitric acid emergency, I can just cap up the flask and uh, we'll just condense all of our nitric acid out of the tube. And of course I've got my fume hood set up, but you can't really see it from this view. Um, anyway, so now I'm going to add my sulfuric acid very slowly uh, to make the nitric. Slowly and in small portions with stirring, remember. And immediately the calcium sulfate will start to form and wherever I pour in the sulfuric acid it's going to start turning really thick and lumpy like cottage cheese. And it's going to be just, just going to become much more difficult to stir. So you want to add it in small portions and stir it continuously. If you have a magnetic stirrer it might be a good use for it, but I do not. But you can see how it's, uh, see how, the, how it's getting super lumpy where I put the, the sulfuric acid in. That's just the calcium sulfate and the ammonium sulfate. There we go. Put that beaker aside. Make sure we wash it before anyone touches it. Cap that flask back up and give her a good stirring. I should really be using a longer stirring rod and such for this, but like I said, I don't have that. And you can see it's getting hotter, it starts getting soupier when it gets hot, because more of it's going into solution. And we have slight decomposition to nitrogen dioxide as well, as you can see, but not nearly as much as if this were um, the pure reactants. So, anyway, um, I'm going to allow this to sit for a little while to make sure the acid gets all within the mixture. And then, uh, then I'll, I'll turn on the heat on high, and then we'll start boiling out first the water, and then of course the 68% nitric acid, which will then uh, collect in a receiving flask, which I will place over here. So um, I'm just going to cut the video, and uh, when nitric acid starts distilling over, I'll show that. Alrighty. Okay, so the reaction has just started to boil. We're not getting anything coming over yet in the, through the column, but um, we're only at 35 Celsius. Now keep in mind that there is excess water in here, so before the nitric acid boils out at 68%, it will boil out at less than 68%. So we are going to have some very weak nitric acid with mostly water come over first, which will then land in this flask here, and we'll keep that because of course it's still nitric acid, just very weak, and we can use that for other things. But then uh, once the temperature hits exactly 121 degrees Celsius, um, it'll stop and then we'll receive, or then we'll switch receivers to this beaker, which will then collect exactly our 68% azeotropic nitric acid uh, for storage right in our reagent bottle. So that's how this is going to work. And uh, so yeah, we'll just continue heating this and wait for it to boil. And then I'll take another video um, when I switch the flasks out. 
here's an update. We are just about to get our first drop of distillate. You'll notice there's nothing in the receiver. If you look up the condenser, you can see that no droplet path has been made yet. So we're just now getting our first drop of distillate, and we are at exactly 100 Celsius. So between now and 121 Celsius, we're going to get a mixture of water and nitric acid, uh, very weak nitric acid, and then at 121 exactly, we shall get our 68% as planned. Now as you can see, um, differing from other processes, notice there's almost no brown fumes above this, uh, above this um, flask here actually above the constituents in the flask. It's just the little yellow coloring of the impure uh, sulfuric acid that gives it the appearance that there may be some decomposition products, but I don't think there are actually any. So you can see, compared to other nitric acid syntheses, this um, decomposition is limited to uh, a very, very small amount, if any. So you can actually do this indoors. Now I've got my fume hood uh, all set up here with a little extra suction tube addition here, but that's just for nitric acid vapors. So. Anyway, uh, I will cut to the part where then I switch the flasks around. Okay, so while we're waiting, I'm going to show you what's really going on. Now this sheet has all the equations that are actually used in this synthesis. Now if you look, um, I'm not actually using calcium nitrate, like you saw here. This is just a simple explanation. I'm using calcium ammonium nitrate, which is found as fertilizer. It has an NPK, or a nitrogen phosphorus potassium rating, of 15.500. And that just means it's 15.5 weight percent nitrogen, 0% phosphorus, 0% potassium, as it should be, because it's calcium ammonium nitrate. And they usually also have a 19% calcium rating on it, too, which is 19 weight percent calcium. And that'll uh, for sure tell you what it is. Anyway, the structural formula for, uh, for calcium ammonium nitrate is 5 calcium nitrate, one ammonium nitrate and 10 water, all bound up in this giant molecule. And that's what these pearls are made of. And it's really, really cheap to go, to go buy at the store. So anyway, um, the balanced equation for this is much longer. As you can see, this, this thing right across the top, it's uh, five calcium ammonium nitrate plus 11 sulfuric acid yields 22 nitric acid, 10 calcium sulfate dihydrate, one ammonium sulfate and eight water. So that's our whole huge equation. And then uh, these numbers down here are simply the atomic masses uh, multiplied by the reaction coefficients. So we have all these numbers here. And now if you look, our goal is 200 milliliters of 68% nitric acid. Now one liter of 68% nitric acid by weight, of course, has 680 grams of nitric acid in it. So we need 136 grams of nitric acid to make 200 milliliters. So we plug 136 grams in over here, and that leaves us with a coefficient of 0.09812 of our original reaction. So we multiply all these by 0.08. Or 0.09812, and we get um, the 168.77 grams of calcium sulfate dihydrate form, the 12.95 grams of ammonium sulfate form, and so on. We get all our, our reaction gram quantities. But of course, these need slight adjustment because on this side, for instance, we need to know how much water to add to this side to end up with 60% nitric acid on this side. Now, our goal is 68%, but we want to start a little bit lower at 60% that we can work that way we can work up to the azeotrope so we know exactly when we're distilling it off. Because if we overshoot, we don't, we won't know the concentration, but if we undershoot, we can bring it up to the azeotrope and then start distilling it off. So, uh, if we look 136 grams of nitric acid at 60% will occupy uh, 226.7 milliliters of solution, and that's at 600 grams per liter, which means 114.2 of those grams are water. So we need 114.2 grams of water total on this side. But we already have eight water formed from the, from the water of crystallization of the potassium ammonium nitrate. So 14.12 uh, grams minus the 114.2. It was just kind of crazy how that worked out. But um, So um, we have to need to subtract these two to find, the, uh, to find how much water we need to add on this side. But that's not all because uh, we're starting with 93% sulfuric acid. So we need 105.77 grams of pure sulfuric acid. And since we're using 93%, we divide this by 93% and we get we need 113.73 grams of 93% sulfuric acid. But that also contributes an additional 7.96 grams of water to this whole thing. So the 14.12 plus the 7.96 minus the 114.2, we get we need to add 92.12 grams of water on this side. And also, I've um, factored in a 5% excess of the calcium ammonium nitrate, so we use all of our sulfuric acid, and this becomes very economical. So we need 222.52 grams of calcium ammonium nitrate with 113.73 grams of 93% terrain opener sulfuric acid to yield us our 136 grams of nitric acid, plus a whole bunch of these products. And uh, yes, so... Regarding the equilibrium, this will actually form an equilibrium because the nitric acid will react with the calcium sulfate to form uh, calcium nitrate, in fact. So there is an equilibrium that's set up that I did not mention in uh, the original equation for, simpl for uh, simplicity's sake. So you'll notice that uh, 
uh, well, you'll notice that the calcium sulfate is not very soluble in water. So it's calcium sulfate solubility in water is 2.4 grams per liter. So in the 114.2 grams of water that we have in here, uh, only 274 milligrams will dissolve. But in reality, this is a lot less because of the common ion effect. We have lots of sulfate ions in solution from the sulfuric acid and lots of sulfate ions from the ammonium sulfate. So since these are both much more soluble than calcium sulfate, it's going to push most of the calcium sulfate out of solution due to the common ion effect and the abundance of sulfate ions. So when the calcium sulfate falls out of solution, uh, that's each sulfate or each calcium sulfate that falls out sequesters one calcium ion. And for every calcium ion we sequester, we get two nitrate ions uh, put in solution. And for every two nitrate ions we get put in solution, uh, we get two nitric acid, and we lose two sulfuric acid by getting two more sulfate in solution, which further drives more calcium sulfate out of solution, and the process just sort of... Um, compounds on itself and you end up with a reaction that goes essentially to completion favoring this side and we end up with basically a calcium sulfate solid ammonium nitrate or ammonium sulfate uh, and 60 percent nitric acid on this side using all these reagents and then we simply just distill the 60 percent nitric acid out as 68 percent azeotropic you know first with a little bit of water that they or the uh yes the eight percent water and then uh yeah so that's that's basically how it works so anyway i thought you might like to know that for um, some of you who are more interested in the chemistry behind it. So, anyway, that's that. Okay, so I'm back, and uh, unfortunately, I have to announce that I made the mistake of leaving this unattended for too long with the foil on it, and ended up getting it a little too hot, so I did get some decomposition of the nitric acid. But as you can see, it's boiling out at exactly 121 degrees Celsius, and uh, I didn't have any bumping issues, and it's just sort of turning into a solid chunk of calcium sulfate and ammonium sulfate. And I over-collected um, the, the pre-product that has a lot of water in it. So I'm unfortunately going to have to end up dis uh, combining these two and redistilling to the 68% azeotrope. So no matter, just an extra step because I made a mistake. So if you watch your synthesis more than I did, um, you will definitely get a better product. But anyway, um, we'll test the strength of the nitric acid now using a, this test tube here, which it, I've placed a small piece of copper metal. It's wet because I just washed it out. A um, small piece of copper metal, which of course will react with the nitric acid to form nitrogen dioxide gas uh, and copper nitrate. So we can test that by taking this pipette. And it'll draw up some of our nitric acid, or what should be nitric acid. And then I can put the test tube in front of the camera, we'll squirt in some of the nitric acid you can immediately see a reaction taking place. I'll hold it up against a white background so you can see any gas that might be being produced. And of course, as this uh, goes, the reaction is going to speed up. And you can see definitely the nitrogen dioxide being produced on top. It's getting brown. But as this uh, continues, the reaction is going to speed up, of course, because it's getting warmer. show that NO2 is heavier than air because it will actually pour out of the tube. Ooh. See? See it drifting toward my fume with suction device? Yeah, I need a steady hand to do that. So anyway, that's nitric acid, 68%, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you follow my method, and uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, rate, and comment.